Aaron Reveles is a public school teacher and union member. He is running for election to the Montebello Unified School District. Here, at the California National Party Convention, he discussed his campaign and called for a broad people's movement to defeat corporate power in California. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm here today to not only thank the California National Party for their endorsement of my campaign, but also rally support for my candidacy for Montebello Unified School District and also talk about collaboration on uh, rallying support for other candidates in the future. Uh, right, right now I seek to shed light on some of the problems that we face in the Golden State of California and offer a path forward. Um, but first I'd like to introduce myself and a little bit about me, how I grew up and why I'm here today. So my name is Aaron Ravellis. I was born in Boyle Heights. It's one of the east side neighborhoods of Los Angeles. Uh, my environment and experiences have taught me to be a proud Chicano. And I learned of the giants of my past uh, merely just by strolling through my neighborhood and learning about my neighborhood's history. Uh, walking by, um, I still see them today when I visit my dad. Um, my favorite mural in my neighborhood is of Che Guevara. And I also see uh, other murals around me of Zapata, Pancho Villa, Porky Gonzalez, Cesar Chavez, and Ruben Salazar in my um, home neighborhood of Boyle Heights, but even where I live now in East LA. Um, today I stand on their shoulders. Uh, I developed politically due to, the, due to this environment and the strong working class values of my parents that they exemplified throughout my life. Um, my mom always taught me to be a hard worker, you know, stand up for yourself, help out other people who are not as fortunate as you, um, which was all good, but also um, my dad had taught me a lot um, politically, even though I don't think he meant to. Um, I would, uh, he would always be on deliveries, delivering furniture, and um, I would only get to see my dad on the weekends and sometimes on Wednesdays. So I would go on these deliveries with him because that would be the only time I'd get to spend time with him. Um, and he would always just give me the newspaper, you know, when he wanted to like relax and uh, not hear a third grade kid just yap about nothing all the time. So he'd be like, hear this, read the California section, read the politics section, and read the business section. And, I'd be like, and he would be like, tell me about it after. So I would read it and I was in third grade at the time, so that was about the time uh, the war on terror is ramping up. So I'd be like, Dad, why are you sending soldiers to Iraq? And he's like, well, they're going to say it's for freedom, but really we want resources, and we want to go and be in, put other, be in other people's business. And then I would ask him, hey, I would just ask him so many questions about politics, like why is this this way, why is this that way? And he didn't really have a political background. He didn't really have, he wasn't, he was registered Democrat, but he wasn't really for Democrats or for any other party. He just told me how him as a working class person, what he thought. And to his surprise, because of all of his explanations, I became uh, very political, even though now he asked why he's so political, even though he would give me the newspaper and, read, and tell me to read the political <laughs> section. <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, but today, um, because of that background, um, I'm a social studies teacher in Los Angeles Unified. Uh, I'm a proud union member, and I'm ultimately a proud socialist. Uh, both the school district I work for, LAUSD, and the one that I live in, Montebello Unified, is going through some of the same problems that all districts around California are currently going through. We have overworked and underpaid teachers, uh, classroom, um, their classrooms are overcrowded, and we're faced with continuous attacks on our unions. We're blamed for district and government officials' incompetence, and sometimes it's not even just incompetence, it's just direct uh, malice. Uh, district bureaucracy and school boards, I've come to realize they seem hell-bent on making things worse not only for us educators, but our students. Uh, they do nothing to solve our teacher shortage that has been, that was pretty bad before the pandemic, but now it's just disgusting. Um, 
I mean, we see in Florida how they're hiring veterans with no teaching experience at all. And hopefully we don't here get to that point. Um, they are advocating for uh, the staffing of our schools with more police as they take librarians and nurses and teachers and um, special education uh, specialists out of our schools, but they want to bring more police in. And to me, when you uh, pull away resources that actually help children and put in police who most of the time don't really have the best children's um, benefits at heart, it's uh, declaring war on our communities, declaring war on our children. And I find that disgusting because not only do they declare war on our children by pulling away resources, um, they also, the districts and the government officials, they uh, work together to embezzle millions of dollars from our public education system. I mean, I remember my uh, sister, she told me uh, about how her superintendent got in trouble because he was funneling money away from their lunch program. And I was got how disgusting it is to steal millions of dollars from children, but how horrendous it is to literally be stealing food away from their mouths. And um, I think a very beloved California native once said, we have money to, for wars, but we can't feed the poor. And it's really disgusting. But not only do we have this district and public official uh, incompetence, but we now have dist uh, charter schools coming into our working class communities. And really their mission is to extract local tax dollars for a profit. Uh, they're creating spaces where a few select students um, have access to more resources. You know, students who are already probably going to do a good job anyways because they have involved parents. They're already pretty bright. They really don't need these extra resources. They were doing really good on their own. Um, but the rest of the students, the English language learners, the students who have special needs, the students with dyslexia, you know, the student that just can't sit down for 15, 20, 30 minutes straight, that just needs a little bit of a helpful reminder of, to stay focused. Um, students whose parents are wor both working 60 hour weeks, so they don't have time to help their kids uh, with homework or to make sure they're actually doing it. Um, those are the kids who need the more resources, but instead they're, treating like, they're being treated like second class citizens in our communities. Um, and they were very smart in doing this, the charter schools. Um, they were able to organize conservative forces over decades with the backing of min millions of dollars. Um, they elected pro-charter Republicans and pro-charter Democrats across our state. And not only is all these problems in our schools happening, but there's many problems outside of our schools that directly affect education. Um, I mean, I have students every day who come in, they're tired, they're hungry, they haven't washed their clothes in a week, and they don't have housing, they're living in a car, they're living at an uh, aunt's house, they're going back and forth between different family members or friends, they don't have a stable place to live, they're moving districts and schools all the time. But uh, all, all of those things can be uh, attributed to the poverty that's exploding in our uh, state in our nation. Uh, so in California, we know it's one of the most expensive states to live in. So many uh, parents are deciding to move to other states where the cost of living is a little bit more affordable, but even there, the costs are increasing. Or other people like uh, myself, uh, me and uh, my partner were putting off having children just because it's so expensive uh, to raise a child, we can barely afford to live ourselves. And this is causing a max uh, exodus of enrollment in our school districts. And many of these school districts are panicking because they know that these funds are going to be pulled because they're going to say, well, you don't have as many students, so we need to take some of our money back. As if the decades of defunding of our public education system wasn't enough, thanks to um, decades ago, it was started with Ronald Reagan. But it, even Democrats and other Republicans after him continued this defunding of our education in uh, California. 
And I really believe that we're coming to a point where we're consolidating and collaborating to fix these problems. I mean, it, it seems easy to say, but it's very hard to do to, to come out and demand that our schools be fully funded, um, that the workers in those schools have thriving wages so we don't have teachers and counselors and librarians and janitors going to a second job after work and then coming in in the morning exhausted. Um, I've come to work exhausted and I can't teach to my students as well if I'm fully rested. Uh, so we need to kick out these private interests of these charter schools who only seek to profit from our working class neighborhoods and uh, remove any politicians, politicians who seek to not only just benefit themselves and their friends and family, but also benefit their donors. Uh, we need to make sure our students come to school ready and to learn to make sure all Californian working families have access to resources to make sure their students are ready. They need to have full access to housing, they need to have health care, they need to have political representation. Um, they also need jobs that pay a thriving wage so they can buy their students uh, school supplies so they can uh, properly feed and clothe and get health care for their child. Uh, we need a reorientation of not just our public education system, but our economy so we can meet the needs of the many and not the few. Uh, some may find it surprising or unfathomable, like how can California, the fifth largest economy in the world on its own, uh, be doing so poorly in public education? We lag behind many of the other 49 states. On an international stage, we're completely blown out of the water. I mean, if you look at the other industrialized capitalist nations, we look at Finland, Germany, France, Denmark, um, they put our students to shame. And even if we look at the rising socialist nations like China and Vietnam and Cuba, they uh, educate our, their students far better than we do with a lot less resources. Um, I don't find it hard to understand, though. Um, our state is under the supermajority control of the do-nothing Democrats. They have the governor's office, 77% of the state senate, 75% of the state assembly, and if they were true to their word and champion working class politics like they claim to have, California would be a much better place, and I believe many of us would not be here today. The rest of the state power is captured by the Republican Party, who if they ever got their way, we would be stuck in a socially, uh, pro uh, socially regressive spiral that many other states are currently uh, experiencing. And I'd like to believe most Californians, especially the ones here today or listening, uh, we welcome all, no matter someone's race, ethnicity, religion, gender, or sexual orientation. I fully believe that California is one of the most progressive states, even though there's many things holding us back but that we really do welcome all. Uh, our task is not a simple one, uh, but there's many Californians who support things that we want. Uh, across the state, we want real re poverty reduction programs. Uh, we want housing for all. We want universal health care. We want a world-class education system for our students. And we do want more democratic control of our economy. Uh, many are waking up to this idea of the working class having more control in our economies, uh, as expressed by our two previous speakers. Um, we don't need those who already own more wealth than they can spend in the hundreds of lifetimes to have more of this money. Uh, we see an increased interest of socialism across our country. We see this in the teacher strikes that have been uh, not only in Los Angeles, but have been going on across the country in the past five years that were only stalled because of the pandemic. But I believe that they will start uh, rising up again. We see this in the rapidly spreading unionizing victories of Amazon and Starbucks across not only our state, but our country. And we also see this in many victories and near victories of those who call themselves socialists. I completely agree with the California National Party's strategy of running candidates, especially local candidates, uh, who will advance many policies that we share, who foster the strengthening of a California identity. 
um, an identity that we can uh, be proud of to be Californian. Because right now I'm not particularly proud of being an American. Uh, we need to work within our communities to make sure that Californians uh, could have a better tomorrow. Um, and I ultimately expend, extend my embrace as a member of the Peace and Freedom Party and hope that the California National Party and many other people uh, join us and the Green Party and uh, our little left union collaboration that's been going on recently so we can consolidate and collaborate uh, further. Because, uh, call me optimistic, but I believe that soon uh, many of us are gonna start winning uh, local seats and city councils and school boards. And I believe if we really play our cards right, we can win state seats, mayoral seats, and really start a political revolution in California. Uh, I'd like to thank the California National Party for doing a great job in supporting local candidates uh, in Long Beach, like Steven Estrada and Carlos Ovalle, who's here, uh, who really fought to represent the working class people of Long Beach and not uh, the Democratic Party or any corporate party or any corporate donors. Um, I think it's important to remember that even if, uh, that if we uh, take these seats through organization and struggle, that we should not become comfortable as it will take those seats and further organization and further struggle to make a real impact across our state. And that we need to struggle within our communities for working class power. Um, in my campaign, I started thinking about if I should use like grassroots campaign that I know many other people say, oh, we're running a grassroots campaign. But I see many Democrats who have the backing of the Democratic Party, who have the backing of Democratic controlled labor unions, who co-opt this message of, oh, we're a grassroots campaign. But they outspend their opponents 10 to 1. And to me, that doesn't seem very grassroots when you have big labor unions, when you have the Democratic Party supporting you. Um, so I'm going forward, and I'm going to call my campaign. It's a working class campaign. It's a working class people campaign. We're working class funded. And powered. Um, ultimately, California politics should focus on improving the lives of Californians. We need infrastructure development of our public education, of our railways, of our streets. And our society needs to prioritize uh, the people when now it prioritizes profit. And I and many of us here today uh, intend to take, take steps to change that. And by using this campaign to rally our community behind a program backed by working class power for working class people, if I win my campaign, it can be used as a model for uh, many others uh, for local seats. If not, it's all right. We'll regroup. We'll reorganize. We'll learn from our lessons. And our, we'll learn from our failures. So hopefully in the future, we will begin to win. So I ask those who are currently not with us and even you who are with us, to join us for a better California today.